so Gillingham come to the race course on Saturday. I, off the top of my head, I cannot remember the last time we played them. Can you? Well, I've been supporting Wrexham since 2005, five, six, and I don't think we played Gillingham in that time. We might not have. Uh, it might be a long time. Uh, I was just trying to have a look on Fotbob to see it gave it gave me a stat, and it doesn't. So that uh, you know, that's uh, that's that's telling us all we need to know. Um, so you're the expert on League Two football. What are you going to tell us about Gillingham? <laughs> Look at his face. His face is just like, oh my god, what? Uh, I can tell you that they're quite a big team based in the south of England in Kent. Um, had a good start to the season, um, but then dipped in form, which led to the dismissal of their manager Neil Harris. Yeah. Um, and I think last week they appointed a new manager. Yeah. Stephen Clements. Yeah, ex Tottenham. Um, he was the son of Ray Clements. If you've got any older yeah. listeners, you might know the, the famous goalkeeper. Um, might be wrong, but is it his first first team or managerial? As job? far as I know, yeah. I think he's, he's possibly been coaching. Um, but yeah. Um, they, so they were start of the season, they were signed grinded out one nils every week, if you remember, weren't they? they but if they were monotonous every week, home or away, they were grinding out these one nils. I think they'd gone, they were top, they'd scored about eight goals after 12 games <laughs> or something, and they were, you know, they were, they were, they were running away with it a bit. Um, and then, like you said, they had a little bit of a run, and uh, Harris, obviously, um, Another ex was he? Was he? Did Harris ever play in the Premier League? Might have been Championship and stuff. Um, but another ex player from the uh, early two thousands uh, was uh, relieved of his duties, uh, and like you say, Clements has come in. Um, I guess a face or two. Let's have a look at the squad first, um, just to see if there's any uh, see if there's any players that you uh, you or I both recognise um, from a name point of view. I guess the obvious one. Is Johnny Williams Wales international? So, yeah, uh, you know, I remember. I, th- I think did he was he a free agent? And I think there was a few people sort of uh, hope hopeful that he might come to us. Uh, perhaps in the summer, uh, is there was a few people sort of talking about him, but um, nothing sort of serious ever came from it. I think it was a, some some Wales fans probably hopeful rather than anything. Do you know what I mean? Um. Uh, but uh, you know, other than that, I guess if you're if you're a real League Two uh, fanatic, you might know a few of their names. But there's not the Macaulay Bond is probably the uh, the live wire up front. Um, but there'll be some very unfamiliar names to the majority of us, and that's what you know. From our point of view, it's hard because that makes them dangerous, doesn't it? But um, you know, they're yeah. not they're not mugs. Uh, I mean, they're still in ninth place with twenty five points, so they're only five points behind us. Um, but away from home, at the race course, uh, I guess we're when we come to do predictions in a minute, we're going to be positive, aren't we? Yeah, they have got a few decent players, like you say, Macaulay Bond. I think Leighton Orient, when they won the league three or four yeah. years ago, he was he was really good in that team. Um, was, that the Justin, was, was that just either before or after Justin Edinburgh when... Uh, he sadly passed away, didn't he? But he was in that that era of uh, of when they had some success, uh, if memory serves. But I am stretching me, me knowledge there. Yeah, I mean, twenty eighteen nineteen season when Edinburgh was there and Bond was there, they won the league and they were they were really good Outstanding, side that year. Weren't they? Um, yeah, Lapsley, um, the midfielder, yeah, very good, very good player. Um, but like you say, it's a game. Even with the suspensions to McLean and Mullen and the injuries as well, you'd still say Rex and the favourites for. Yeah. Um, so lineup wise, I'm not who's left standing. <laughs> I'm not sure who's left standing. <laughs> um, what do you think we're going to see on Saturday? Um, we, know the, we know for sure that we're not going to have McLean and Mullen. We know that for correct. a fact, don't we? So uh, because there is just no way that can happen. Um, Arthur's going to start in goal. Yeah. Unless he gets, unless there's, unless, this is all assuming there's no injuries in training this week type of thing, isn't it? Arthur's going to start in goal. Ford probably going to start at right wing back. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got an hour. He's taking him off after an hour not to push him. They'll, they'll work him in training. They obviously rested him on Tuesday. So that, that's the, that's the thing. Um, 
I'm guessing Mendy's going to start left wing back. Yeah, too soon for Hosanna. Um, well, Hosanna's yeah. got no chance because he's not even in the squad, is he? He's not listed. Of course, yeah. So, course. Um, so it's definitely going to be him. Uh, then we've got no Tony Cliff. So Tony Cliff's got a few weeks out. O'Connell's out for eight weeks. Barnett's out for eight weeks. Hayden, we don't know about. Uh, it's all gone a bit quiet on him, hasn't it? It's a bit weird. There was rumours that he was ill. Then he's, then people think he might have had a, a bit of a tweak. So it's gone a bit quiet. So Hayden could come out of nowhere, but could you just throw him in? Or are we going with Tozer at the back? And then the two midfielders, as I call them, either side of him, it's going to be O'Connor and Evans, surely, isn't it? Yeah, and to be fair, I've really liked the look of Evans and O'Connor at the back. Yeah. Granted, I'd like to see them in midfield in their natural positions, but away at Notts County, I thought they were excellent. Um, and away at Mansfield, too, I thought they were excellent. So I fully expect to see Tozer as the centre yeah. and flanked by O'Connor on the left and George Evans on the right. There's just, just to play devil's advocate, there's no way Boyle, or this is what we're talking about before, there's no way Boyle or Cleworth has played their way in after the other night. I don't think so. I don't think that they, you would have looked at them and gone, they must start now. Let's push one into midfield, one of the others into midfield. I think, like you, it's going to be that back three. Yeah, I think it's hard as a defender to shine in the match Maybe. and try to impress yeah. him, if that makes sense. You can only do what you can do, really, and that's defend. So, unless there's injuries, I'd be surprised if the back three isn't toes of um, Evans and O. Connor. Tom O'Connor. Um, so I'm expecting Elliot Lee and James Jones to definitely start in midfield. Um, and I guess the question is then, is it Andy Cannon or Luke Young? Um, does the fact that Luke Young played last night to get some minutes, does that tell us that Cannon is probably fit, so he was able to give Young the minutes last night? Because if Cannon wasn't fit, would you take the chance with Young last night is my, is my question. Do you know what I mean? You wouldn't risk the injury, would you? Um, it's hard to answer. <laughs> hard to answer. Um, potentially. Potentially. I'm never a fan of playing Young and Jones together, if I'm being brutally honest. Needs think must, though, at the moment, aren't we? Yeah, needs must. Who else is there? But, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I think we can all agree Lee will be in the number 10. Jones will definitely start. And then it's a case of, like you say, whether it be Young, whether it be Cannon, whether it be, well, I don't know if we've got anyone else, to be honest. Unless we see one of the two centre-backs come into midfield and Clowerth starts or Boyle starts, but I can't see that. So hands might be tied in terms of that midfield through. I was just going to say, I'll tell you what would be, re- I'll tell you what would be um, an interesting side story, just touching on what you've just said. If one of those lads comes in at the back and we push one of those uh, O'Connor or Evans into midfield because Cannon is injured, if I was Luke Young, I'd be thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> you know what I mean? You would be then, you would be thinking, well, like, you know, whew. you know, you'd be starting to quit, ask some serious questions, wouldn't you? Absolutely. If you wasn't yeah. already. Absolutely. And this is a club captain, we forget, Luke Young, who was before the end of last season he was a lot of people's player of the season certainly in the top three players of the season until he lost his place in the team around easter time or somewhere similar so yeah if young still can't get a game in that midfield and he's getting replaced by someone else who's come out from center back um yeah you'd be asking questions but you've got to trust in parkinson i guess yeah uh and then up front uh, it will be two from Bickerstaff, Dolby, Palmer. Um, again, you've got to you've got to think that uh, Dolby and Palmer is going to start that game, haven't you? Yeah, I don't recall them two starting too many games together. To be honest, I'm not sure what the dynamic is going to look like. But no, two. Well, yeah, for me, especially with Bickerstaff playing 98 That's, minutes yeah. on Tuesday, I think we'll see those two up front. Yeah, it's it's that it's that old adage that um, you normally like to have a blend of skills and characteristics, don't you? So uh, the common consensus is that Palmer and Dolby are similar. 
Dolby's a little bit more skillful than people give them credit for, but they are frame wise that's why they they that comes doesn't it because they're both the they're both used as the target man really that focal point aren't they that's why i think that that com, that sort of comparison comes uh, but given their experience and i think it's definitely going to be them that start the game um but they might not i'd say i fully expect to see bigger staff off the bench them yeah potentially and um, we never see both strikers play the full 90 minutes do we so yeah bigger staff there's no way that he would, <clears throat> again, just playing devil's advocate, no way that he would potentially use, do something different and play a, um, a, play yeah. a Jordan Davis or Elliot, go back to playing Elliot Lee a bit further. Remember we had two, three, maybe four games where we played Elliot Lee further forward. I don't think it particularly worked, but is there a, is there a chance that he could do that? Yeah, it's that dynamic, isn't it? Where you could play Leo Palmer and then maybe Davis as the number 10 in his usual position. So maybe, maybe, but I think our two senior strikers history, will both start. History it, history tells us that that isn't going to happen, doesn't it? But, yeah. you know, I guess the, the only thing, the saving grace is there are other options to try if, if, if one of them, for, for instance, if Palmer or Dolby's got a knock, and he doesn't necessarily want to start him, and he's thinking, oh, I'm not sure whether to throw Jake in or what I'm going to do. He has got a plan C or D or whatever it is that he could he can switch to. Yeah, exactly. But don't expect, I don't expect to see it. So this really, this pivots really on Cannon, doesn't it? If Cannon's fit, he probably starts, and everything sort of stays as it is. But if he's not, then there might be some Chinese puzzling of players potentially. Um, it would be interesting to see that uh, that team used prior prior to kick off. Uh, what's your plans? Are you, where 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 are you? Not commentary duties? Nothing? Nothing going on? No. Um, I could be on commentary duties. Oh, don't know yet. Right. Not right. But I need to be wary of where my leg can stretch in the commentary zone because it's very very tight in there, and God. I can't bend it past sixty degrees. So we'll see. Right. We'll see. All right. Okay. Um, I'm uh, I'm going to the mice Gwyn beforehand. Um, Kevin Russell is the speaker at the mice Gwyn, so we're uh, we're going there for our uh, pre-match meal um, and for some chat beforehand, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, I haven't looked at the weather. It's probably going to be crap. Uh, is what I, what I would say. Uh, so score-wise, given what we, you know, given what we've what we've said. Uh, my gut feeling is Wrexham by a goal at home. That's my, uh, you know, I, I still don't think we're capable of keeping a run of clean sheets, but I'll be quite happy if we do manage to keep one. Um, not confident in us enough yet with that, um, but I still think we can outpower teams, especially late on, although we are missing a couple of players that would normally bail us out, perhaps if we needed to. So it's going to be an interesting test, this one. What, what are you thinking? What's your... I'm going to, so I'll go 2-1, is my gut feeling. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think it'll be tough. Obviously, we're missing two of our best players. Um, Gillingham, that sort of factory setting is keep it tight. They might be yeah. different under the new manager, I'm not sure. Um, so I think it'll be tight, it'll be tough, but home advantage, um, I think we'll get the win. I think we'll get a clean sheet as well. I'm going to go oh, right, you're, you're okay. You're okay. You're, go, you're going the opposite to me is on this clean sheet front. That's interesting. Uh, that's a big, big call. But uh, yeah, okay, good. Looking forward to it. So either way, you'll make it there though, will you? So whether it's commentary or what, your your plan is to try and be there. Touch wood, yeah, I'll be there. Touch wood. Okay. Good stuff, and I will be. And then the good news is you get a free week next week because I'll be in Egypt. Um, so you won't have me messaging you going, right, what time, where are you, what time you're working, what's going on? Um, <laughs> whereas I'll be in 30-degree heat uh, while it's crap. I know it's rubbish. Isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure you would rather be here than uh, than uh, in Egypt, wouldn't you? Oh, debatable. I hope it rains in Egypt. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> Um, yes, we'll, we will we will endeavour to try. Um, so that's the Accrington game, if memory serves, isn't it? That's the away game at Accrington. Um, we'll be able to watch it in, in, in Egypt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll take, 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The uh, eye follow is very big in uh, Egyptian hotels. It's, uh, it's <laughs> from from experience. So uh, yes, the uh, the old fire stick will be in the suitcase. <laughs> oh, so there are more than two hours ahead in Egypt. Uh, it was one, but I'm not sure with our clocks changing. So might, might change be two. now. Might yeah. be two. I've there never been go. this time of year. I normally go uh, oh, normally yeah. go earlier in the year or later. I'm just in the other room. <laughs> Sorry about that. All no, right, mate, don't worry. Well, uh, no. I'm, not pay- I'm not paying for an appearance, whoever that was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate, let's, uh, we'll end it there and uh, roll on Saturday, innit? Yeah, might see you Saturday, if All I right, don't. Mate. Have a good holiday. All right, mate. Thanks very much. All right, see you later.